Hello, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared, and in this video, we're going to talk about SheCam utilizing the features of the XL marking system on the MAD cutting table. That particular system incorporates a permanent marker and a scriber, and, and as well as, of course, the actual plasma cutter on the machine itself. So let's get started. In order to demonstrate this, I have created a drawing that has all the required features. Let's bring it in. So I'm opening a DXF, lower left corner, as described in other videos. We're going to default to that. And there's our part. It's two inches wide three inches tall. Now, as in any um, part that we're going to manufacture, first thing we need to do in sheet cam is open a tool set so that it knows um, how thick the material is, etc. while we're cutting. Anyway, what we're going to do is for this application, I'm going to figure we're cutting 16 gauge mild steel. So I'm going to pick a 45 amp shielded tip mild steel, not aluminum, not stainless steel, um, inch series, and I'm going to say open. That then, just to go ahead and dismiss this dialog box, that then is going to open your tools right here. And if you can see all the different plate thicknesses that you can cut with the plasma, but also the scriber and the magic marker. Now, let's talk about layers a little bit right up here. If I click this layer, notice how everything went white. Sheet cam, as in just about every CAD CAM program I've seen, associates a particular tool in operation with a, a layer. And layers are things that when you create your drawing, you can put them on different layers, almost like, um, you know, cellophane that you draw on and then you draw another cellophane paper and you put it on top or a sheet or whatever, and you create different layers. You can do the same thing in your drawing programs. Now, in this application, the DXF is a single layer. So when we go ahead and create the operation to cut this, it's going to think we want to cut everything that you see here, and that's going to create some problems. To illustrate this, let's just go ahead and, and do that very thing. So we're going to go here. We're going to a new jet cutting operation. We want offset to the outside, and this was all described in other videos. Please watch them if you have any questions. And we're going to pick our layer. There's only one there so it's pretty easy to figure out and since we're cutting 16 gauge mild steel we have a 0.0598 thick quality five remember higher the number quality the better and it has a kerf width uh, which is the actual slot being cut 55 thousandths of an inch wide now this is something interesting in regards to the mad the feed rate right here most machines, you will assign feed rate and cheat cam will put this particular feed rate out in your G-code. The MAD um, burning tables uses a much more sophisticated system. And what we're doing is we are actually generating G-code with a placeholder. And when we talk to the motion controller in the machine, we are at the machine telling our motion controller how fast to go. This allows us to do a lot of features, corner slow down, etc., anything else we want to do. Now, that has the advantage of let's say you had been playing with 16 gauge mile steel and you determined that, you know, 300 inches a minute just cuts fantastic and that's what I want to use. So that's what you tell the mad machine, I want you to cut 16 gauge at 300 inches a minute. Now, at this current time, SheCam here doesn't know that. Now there is a button on the MAD machine that if you click update, it will update the tables in it, in which case you could then link them to sheet cam and it would actually know the values that you're using at the machine. It, it's very simple to do and that's described, I believe, in another video. So anyway, all feed rate is doing here in sheet cam in regards to the MAD cutting table is it's helping sheet cam determine how long will it actually take to manufacture this part, you know. Anyway, let's go on down here a little bit lower. The next thing we're concerned with is lead-ins. Do we want a lead-in on plasma cutting? Absolutely, because if we didn't have one, it would try to blow a hole right here on the cutting path and then start cutting, and we don't want that. What we want to do is be able to blow a hole out here, move in, and then start cutting on the on the outside. So we'll say okay with a, with our perpendicular lead-in. Uh, once again, lead-ins are also covered in other videos. So we say okay. Now, look at all the errors we threw up here. What has happened is Sheet cam has offset the hole, the plasma cutter, to the inside, and it did correctly on the outside of the part, the peripheral right here, the red. It has offset it half of the kerf width, which, remember, was 55 thou. So the green line is now representing the center line of the cutting tip as it's cutting. Well, you could get a good idea how fat that kerf width is, the actual slot that's being cut in the metal. It's not going to fit into these tiny little letters right here, and that's why we're seeing all these errors. 
Now, this is a problem that we can easily fix right here. So what we need to do is move these to different layers so that we could assign a different tool to them. Now in SheetCam, to do that, we're going to go to Mode, Edit Contours. Now right here, let's go ahead and move Marker first. I am going to hold down the left button, drag over Marker. See how it's selected? It's white now. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to move to Layer, New Layer. Let's be original and call that layer marker. Okay, once again, we're still seeing errors because we haven't fixed this down here. All right, now let's go create an operation for the marker. This time, we do not want an offset because we want to accurately mark what's shown on the screen. Our layer we're going to pick will be now marker, and the tool will also be marker. Do we want to lead in? No, we don't because we don't want to you know have the marker coming in off the off the path we want it just to stay on the path so we'll say no lead in or none and we'll say okay now we have this operation i just highlighted see how it went all white right here now we're marking that let's go ahead and do the same thing for scriber we don't have to change the mode because we're still in the edit contours mode once again hold down the left button select scriber right click on it move to new layer and Lo and behold, we'll call it Scriber. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new operation. We don't need the offset. Remember that um, sheet cam remembers your last settings. That's why it's there. We'll say Scriber. This time we're going to say Scriber. And once again, no lead in. We'll say OK. And now notice how everything has gone green. There's no error showing. We are essentially good to go. Now, I have made a critical error in doing this part in sheet cam. And I'm going to go ahead and simulate it, and you see if you can figure out what that error is. So let's go over here. We're going to simulate it about 400% um, percent to speed this up a little bit. Let's hit start. Um, I'm sorry, let's slow it down to 300 to start. Hit start, and if you see where we cut the hole, cut the outside. Now we've gone up, and we've got the magic marker, and you can see over here highlighted in blue what it's doing. Now it's scribed. Okay, did you figure out what I did wrong? Uh, essentially, we cannot make this part. As soon as we cut the outside of the part, the part most likely fell in between the slats, and there's nothing left to mark on. The part has disappeared. Now, to fix that, um, the golden rule in plasma cutting is the last operation is going to be the one that's actually going to cut the part out of the plate. So what we're going to do is we need to move this operation here to the end. Now, SheetCam makes that easy for us. All you want to do is hold down the left mouse button and watch as I move the mouse button down. Look how the outside offset has moved down to the very end. Now it's at the end. Now if we come along and say, OK, let's um, Resimulate it. Look what happens now. Now we're marking first, as shown over here, highlighted. Now we're scribing. Let's speed that up. And last but not least, we're cutting it out and we're done. At this point, um, SheCam is done processing it. We can now go over here and generate the G code necessary to run the program on the MAD. I like to rename tap to NC for numerical code. We say save. Yeah, I want to replace the file. It says post process completed. Everything was good to go. Say OK. And at this point, we could take that, U that file, put it on a USB, take it out to the MAD machine, and go ahead and cut our part out easy peasy. Um, anyway, I hope this has described to you the simple process of using the Excel marker system. Thank you for watching, and happy cutting out there. Bye.